Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. Coming up on the program, Lagos gives breakdown of 2022 budget, Governor Sanwalu donates 50 million naira to Nigerian Legion, and Lagos holds interdenominational service for Armed Forces Remembrance. Let's get started with the Lagos State 2022 budget analysis, which has tagged Budget of Consolidation. Now, the budget breakdown presented by the State Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget, Sam Egube, says infrastructure development represents 35% of the entire budget size of 1.758 trillion naira approved for the year. Mr. Governor, on SDG and investment. Governor Babajire Samulu signing into law the 2022 appropriation law on the last day of 2021, a move which signals the commencement of work for the new year. The Ministry of Economic Planning and Budgets has given a breakdown of the amount allocated to major sectors in the budget. Infrastructure appears to be taking the lion's share. The 2022 budget, which we have christened the budget of consolidation, is a landmark budget in the history of the state, both in its size and texture. The approved 2020 budget of 1.758 trillion, made up of 1.167 trillion capital expenditure and 591 billion recurrent expenditure, results in a capital to recurrent ratio of 66 to 34 percent in favor of our capital expenditure, uh, which means that this budget focuses quite heavily and deliberately. Uh, by 66% on our capital spend around our infrastructure. Total revenue is estimated at 1.237 trillion, while deficit funding requirement is 521 billion, which is 21% of our debt service to total revenue. Um, this is within the fiscal sustainability benchmark of 40% by the federal government and 30% by the World Bank. What this shows is that Lagos State has huge capacity um, because of our natural performance, uh, our very aggressive performance on our revenue lines, um, generally to take on more debt to fund further and accelerate our infrastructure position. So this increased deficit positioning, which we are seeing, um, only brings us to a 21% um, debt service to total revenue um, sustainability position. Infrastructure is essential to statewide economic and social development. It is therefore important that we accelerate the completion of our ongoing project to release the inherent value of the projects to the people of Lagos. This is especially important given that this is the last full year budget of this administration. Accordingly, we have increased our investment in infrastructure by 86% over prior year budget to 619 billion, representing 35% of the entire budget size. The Commission is in charge of education, energy and mineral resources as well as transportation are also on ground to give more details on their various sectors. New classroom blocks, new schools, entirely new schools, uh, expansion of existing schools because uh, We've already agreed that we are going to provide multiple pathways for students in our schools by ensuring that within the same campus they are able to address to attend general education classes or vocational classes. And of course, we'll still expand the aspect by adding uh, aspect uh, what we call monotechnics, that is focused on IT, focused on fashion design, and so on. So for all this, we plan to spend a minimum of like 10 billion naira. Uh, like the commissioner said, uh, for economic planning and budget said, the, the most critical factor in school is actually the quality of teaching and learning that goes on in the classroom. And while infrastructure is great and remarkable, and of course you can only learn better in a good environment, and we continue to improve our existing schools. Uh, we, we've already uh, had over 1,400 projects in 
our existing schools to date. So even though I've said 10 million on uh, expansion and so on, we still have at least two to three million for the uh, reconstruction and you know the existing schools, windows, doors, and so on. Like you said, the most critical factor is teaching and learning. And we are very happy to to let the public know that all our efforts at infrastructure, at integration with the technology, at improving teaching by resourcing our teachers, training our teachers, giving them tablets in the primary schools and so on, has led to a really, really remarkable uh, increase in performance. If I take the uh, secondary schools, the YF results went up from 39% to 79.4% of the state. We are spending 153 billion to complete the first phase of the red line as well as the first phase of the blue line so that we can then get it into passenger operation by the fourth quarter of 2022. When you look at the junction of the corridor, it's not a matter of putting a bridge. So when you look at Lagos and you understand the traffic in Lagos, you would understand that Lagos State cannot build itself out of congestion. And so we have to look at the best solution for various our junctions. With regard to Kurudu uh, roundabout, I think the solution there is not really a bridge. Uh, the solution there is expanding that junction, improving the public transport circulation um, in a Kurudu and making sure that we build lay for uh, the public transport buses to go into. And then ensuring that uh, those who want to go into Kurudu Road, we have a dedicated lane for them. Those who want to go straight, I mean, across, we have a dedicated link. So it's a matter of rearranging or reconfigurating the junction in such a way that everybody has a chance of navigating that junction at the shortest possible time. So we're signalizing that junction. We're taking, a, uh, we're taking out the roundabout. And then there are other measures uh, such as, uh, I mean, the inner roads that will be improving so that people are not just captive to that major roads, there are other options that people can take. So we're at 73% right now, but by the end of March, we expect to be at 100%. So any street in Lagos that has um, street lighting will be lit up. Now then, 49 kilometers of street lighting are currently working today in Lagos, out of 1,300. And we expect that by the end of March, we'll be at the 1,300 mark. That's 100%, and, and, and you can take um, my word for that. So in addition to this, how do we keep these lights on? We know that there's a problem currently with um, power generation and power supply in Nigeria. Everybody has their own generator in the back of their house if you can afford it. We're running these street lights based on generators as well. We have a whole lot of them across Lagos. The other thing we're doing is we're changing the generators gradually from running on diesel and polluting the environment to running on gas. So that we expect to start next month, and by the end of this year, the streets in or the air in Lagos should be a lot cleaner because we would have replaced about 90% of them. We also currently have the same um, four power stations that are also connected to the street lights and also supplying other Lagos infrastructure. We're going to continue to maintain that. And one of the landmark things we expect to do this year is working with the federal government is to recreate a Lagos electricity market such that we can carve out a niche in Lagos and improve power supply in Lagos independently of the rest of the country. So far, waiting for the rest of the country to improve and, and dragging Lagos along is keeping us from where we need to be. So this year we expect to achieve that working with the federal government. That's not all. The state government is also prioritizing existing contractor-funded infrastructure projects that will be beneficial to residents of the state. The second objective is basically to prioritize existing contractor-funded infrastructure project, meaning that there are certain projects that are strategic to the state, which we have front-loaded through arrangement with our contractors to move ahead of payment. Some of these projects include the completion of eight stadia across the five Ibile divisions of Lagos State to facilitate youth development, engagement, and community sports to the construction and rehabilitation of schools across the state to significantly improve access to quality education. The construction of the six-lane reinforced concrete Lekki Ekpe Expressway from a Lekko Junction to Ekpe T Junction. This strategic project is aimed at accommodating the increasing huge and heavy vehicular movements in the Lekki Ekpe axis 
especially when the deep sea port and the Dankote refineries et al. comes into operation. D, procurement of 62 fire vehicles to improve our fire response service all over Lagos by further decentralizing of operating locations of all over the states of our fire service operation. This will strengthen our emergency response capability. And then the construction of a 130-bed new Massey ultra-modern and fit-for-purpose pediatric programmed and emergency general hospital. We believe that when this hospital, which will be located at Lagos Island, is completed, it will be the largest specialist children hospital in sub-Saharan Africa. And then the construction of the Akwebi Link Bridge to Maryland that will improve significantly travel time and alternative route options in the axis. All these projects are contractor funded with structures that provide very beneficial payment terms that give the state upfront value ahead of payments, thereby increasing the sustainability benefits to the state. Human capital continues to be an area of deep interest to the state. We believe that the opportunities in the state can only be converted to value by a population that is healthy, skilled, and inclusive. This year's budget, budget increased our investment in this regard by 30% to 325 billion in 2022 which is about 18% of the total budget size. The Lagos State-approved budget for the year 2022 includes 1.167 trillion naira for capital expenditure, 591.281 billion naira for recurrent, total revenues estimated at 1.237 trillion naira, deficit funding requirement is 521.275 billion naira, which is 21% of debt service falls within the fiscal sustainability benchmark of 40%. The Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu has donated a sum of 50 million naira to the Nigerian Legion in the state and launched the 2022 emblem. Now the gesture is coming ahead of this year's Armed Forces Remembrance Day where he promised to empower widows of the fallen heroes. It's the Lagos State Executive Council meeting. Commissioners heading various ministries as well as the special advisors are all present to brainstorm on the affairs of the state. The topical issue is the 2022 commemoration of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. Mr. Governor is indeed... The Commandant of the State Nigerian Legion, retired Colonel Fola Konde, commends the state government for prioritizing the welfare of retired officers and seeks more support for families of the fallen heroes. The Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration emblem, a pre-fund launch is an event the members of the Nigeria Legion to for look forward because it is a day where the guarantee of our fallen heroes and the sacrifice of the military in keeping the nation together to celebrate. It is also a period when we enjoy the, the graciousness of our the patron, the governor. We appreciate the donation of five million naira by our label to our able to do to do Governor Mr. Babaji Desamudu and we pray the good Lord will continue to bless you. I would like to remind Mr. Governor of his promise to us to uh, empower over 1,000 widows of us, disabled soldiers and age establishment. The occasion of Armed Forces Remember the celebration of free fund launch is a period for us to generate fund fair donations to cater for the welfare of widows, orphans, disabled soldiers, and aid establishment. I also would also like to let you know that any donation that is made will be used judiciously without prejudice, sir. We have more than 6,000 numbers of widows, orphans, disabled soldiers, and aid establishment in Lagos State, chapter of the Legion. And most of these people need empowerment to aid their living condition. 
Governor Babajide Somolu announces a donation of 50 million naira, an appeal fund for the state legion. On behalf of the government and people of Lagos State, we will donate 50 million naira to the emblem. So you can see that we have done tenfold of what we, what we did the other time. So that in itself is a big leap for us. Um, we will continue to support in other areas. We, we gave commitments around empowering some of the widows um, that you mentioned. I'd be surprised if we haven't taken all that up, but I'm using this opportunity to direct um, the Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Elevation, WAPA, to work with your office to identify beneficiaries and people that we can give the empowerment and support to, you know, very, very um, specifically. And so she will do that, you know, within the first quarter um, of this year. So you can be rest assured that, that that will happen. I'm sure you know that a lot of your men are also currently being engaged in one form or the other by uh, the state government, you know, as support to give them in keeping security in all of our schools. You know, we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to um, use a significant amount of your men. I think they're in their thousands that we're using currently. And we'll continue to give that support and, and, and give them the stipend that we give to continue to, you know, encourage them and appreciate them for the work they've done. Then the governor decorates the commandant with the Armed Forces Remembrance Day emblem. The meeting ends as the governor also decorates the deputy governor, Kadri Hamzat, head of service, Muriel Kola, some cabinet members and head of security agencies in the state. Still in the spirit of celebrating the fallen heroes of the nation, the Lagos State Government held an interdenominational service for the 2022 Armed Forces Remembrance Day. Now speaking during the service, Governor Samuelu says, the state government will continue to support families of those who pay the supreme price for Nigeria. Let's take a look. Mercy, the Lord will heal us. In Lagos State, the Armed Forces Remembrance Day interdenominational church service is held at the Chapel of Christ the Light in Alausa Ikeja. Governor Babajide Sanwolu leads some members of the State Executive Council in thanksgiving in a service attended by service chiefs and heads of other security agencies in the state. The service is characterized by hymns, praise and worship sessions interspersed with prayers for the families of fallen heroes. In our own generation, in our own time, God will heal our land. All our policies will work. All the ideas will transform and bring peace to this country and there will prosperity in the land in the name of Jesus Christ. The sermon admonishes Christians to exhibit values that will attract God's intervention in the affairs of the country. It is for us to acknowledge God for the sacrifices and labor of patriots in the armed forces, not only in preserving Nigeria territory, but making significant and indelible contributions to the social, economic, and political development of this nation. And so it's also an annual celebration, which is also meant to reassure the family and relations of the fallen combatants that the nation still remains committed to them. And when we look at the theme of our worship today, I will heal their land. The theme is very relevant. The theme is very appropriate to Nigeria and our situation today. Especially when we look around with our security challenges, kidnapping, 
insurgency, banditry, the list is, remains endless. Look at our, at our economy, inflation refused to go down, devaluation of our currency, rising on unemployment, corruption everywhere. To compound matters, we are battling with COVID-19. Situations are also alarming and frightening. At a time like this, all this indicates that things are not right with our nation. It indicates that there is ill health in our economy and every sphere of life. But one thing that is certain, that God is a healer. And this God that we call his name, that we serve, he will heal our land. Governor Babajide Sonwulu commends the armed forces for keeping the peace in different parts of the country, promising to continue with the tradition of remembering the fallen heroes. On behalf of the people and government, thank all their families that are here and assure them that the government will continue to do what is expected of us, to continue to remember them and to say that they are falling they, are, they, they, are, they were fallen heroes, but their time and their efforts and their, their commitment in the country is not, to, is not in vain. The country will continue to remember them and will continue to play our own roles as we are in the point of leadership now. And so we pray that our country, we know peace, we know greatness, and the lost glory of our land will come back in our generation. And that as we journey in 2022, the peace of the Lord, which surpasses all understanding, will rest with our country, will rest with our state, and will all be committed to renew vigor. And so people of God, as we go back, as we are leaders in our own little rights, because it's not only the governor that is the leader. In your office, you're a leader. In the platoon you are commanding, you're a leader. In the barracks you are commanding, you are a leader. In your home, you are a leader. In the school you are leading, you are a leader. And if all of us can indeed listen and take the words that have been preached to us this morning, then indeed the Lord will lead. He will not only lead our nation, He will not only lead our land, He will not only heal our land, He will heal our society. Activities at the 2022 Armed Forces Remembrance Day church services point to the need for continuous spiritual backing for those who take the risk to defend the unity and integrity of Nigeria to encourage them to do more. This is where we call it today on the program Dateline Lagos. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balugum. Until next time, do remember to always stay safe.